Hi guys, I'm trying something new. I'm actually recording this episode on my microphone. It kind of gives me a little bit of an anxiety because there are free settings and I can't figure it out. Only one is working and the one that is working is picking up every sound around. So yes, this is stressing me out. But this is Self Growth Diaries part four. This is crazy because I have not been as productive with my YouTube channel in like forever basically since I have it. Like I have been in the past few months. I really enjoy it and it's such a great creative outlet. Anyways, so I just want to focus on self-growth diaries of April. Honestly, not a lot has been happening. It was mainly the same things that I've been working on previously like... Uh, healing myself, self-growth, um, generally, you know, just improving my lifestyle, working on myself. It's been hard, but it is what it is. I just have to keep going and I just can't give up. But I have to admit that in April, I've been going into like this dark corners of my memories, of my soul, of my especially childhood and teenage years experiences. And instead of just brushing them off, I was actually facing them and asking myself why does it still trigger me why do I feel so emotional about those things I think it's very important to ask yourself those questions because I feel like when we face our fears and demons it opens up new doors and what we think was scary or you know this huge monster is no longer a monster and when we work through our experiences and traumas it really frees us at least this is how I feel about it also in the month of April I really allow myself to reply slower to people I used to be a person who when I um, get a text I would reply right away and when people would not text me back I would stress and panic and obviously when people don't reply to you for days you know you just feel like oh my god did I do something wrong especially with close people but I just realized that sometimes I'm not in the mood of replying to messages and not just in the mood not in the mental state of having long conversations conversations over text. I prefer text over phone call, but honestly, I prefer face-to-face conversation than over texting. It's just not really like productive to me. Anyways, but yes, I just realized that when I'm not in this mental space of texting anyone, I'd rather not text them whatsoever. However, I kind of developed a new rule. I will probably start telling people like right away, hey, I'm not in the right mental space. I'll text you later. But anyways, yes, that was again like a freeing thing to do because I took away the pressure from myself being there available to others 24-7. Obviously, I'm not talking about my husband. Like, I want to text him every damn day when he's at work, you know, you know the vibe. But, you know, I should not be making myself so available to others. I should be focusing on myself and my life and my goals and my mental health. It's been hard, you know, I've been talking about that. March has been a tough month. April was a little bit easier, but ahead of me, there are way more things that I have to complete, I have to conquer, and it stresses me out and I need that space for myself before I can offer my time and me and my company to someone else. And obviously that goes in return to others. You know, I'm no longer expecting them to text me right away. And honestly, I prefer that. I feel like it's great when people can take their time and, you know, compose what they want to say and make sure that they're in the right space to reply to your text. I think this is way better. And once I work through that, I really realized that it's not personal. Everybody's so damn busy, especially nowadays with their jobs, educations, life. I'm so busy, you know, more often than not, I just don't have that time to sit around and sex anyone. So I guess my point is that if you're on either end, receiving or sending a hand, just don't take it personally. You will feel so much better if you don't and it will free you for sure. I don't expect anything from anyone at this point. I have expectations obviously for myself. I have expectations from my husband and that's basically it. I don't expect anything from anyone else. 
and it's really freeing because you don't live in the constant state of waiting for something or being like hey i thought you were that person but you're a different one you don't have those fake personas about anyone or prejudices or anything else any ideas about someone else in your head because they may not be that person or the situation may play out differently i really try to teach myself not to run ahead of anything not to make scenarios in my head and think about you know how something will play out because it's very possible and actually 100% possible that something will not go the way you plan to go so I really love to prepare myself for unexpected and this really helped me I think that was one of the biggest things in terms of text because I always thought that oh my god they don't care about me what did I do wrong the question and this feeling like the very very heavy cloud above me this is how it felt this cloud of what did I do wrong what did I do wrong and you just sit there for hours and going everything every damn scenario but the reality is people are busy that's the bottom line and even if they're not and they decided not to text you that's on them whatever they just don't want to text you all of us have been in this situation again on both ends and that's okay people fall out relationships break connections break like that's absolutely fine and as an adult you know this is something that we should expect at least this is what i expect now nothing lasts forever our lives don't last forever so this is just the reality and the truth and lives are so short i keep saying that all the time that i just cannot bother myself with silly texts and i will no longer do that another thing that i did in april is i allowed myself to feel my emotions my feelings very very deep to the point where it hurt and it goes hand in hand together with the first thing that i mentioned in here is that i allow myself to go or not even allowed i actually just did it i didn't allow myself i thought that was a necessity honestly i went into those dark corners of my memories and my experiences and just confronted those things and i allowed myself to feel those things deeply i went through anger and frustration and i'm still working through that you know it's not like i start doing something on april 1st for example and finish on the 30th no the experience keeps going but sometimes it's a short one sometimes it's a longer one and in terms of just feeling things deeply it's really painful but then it it's very healing as well because again same things works here as with confronting your fears is that once you've done it you're no longer scared of that and you know how it will play out most likely so just feeling things uh, deeply and uh, working through those feelings and emotions is very important to me and I think it really builds my character in a way and the way I navigate through life at this point I really noticed in April that I am way more confident I moved differently i talk differently like i in general don't care i really feel confident in my body despite the fact that i gain weight you know i don't look how i want to look but i still very confident because i work on my values my experiences and who i am as a person so at this point it's impossible to break me at my core at my foundation and i will forever be strong and confident and i know that when i'm older at 42 i'll be even better i will be the baddest confident person that I want to be so badly and frankly who I was born to be that's just the reality you know I was born to be that person who I am becoming now it just that happened that I was born into the environment where my wings were basically cut off and yes there was no support but I'm not going to go into that that was basically it that was not a lot I know but I really kept working on the same things from March and just building as I mentioned you know more stamina and just working on the core issues the things that bother me i keep focusing on my teenage years and my childhood i actually thought that was quite interesting that when like i was 12 my mom was 32 the same age i am right now and a lot of the things that started happening that were like painful for me were around the age of 12 a little bit earlier than that but i feel like the majority of those things were coming from the age 
age of 12 because at that age I was developing more and more personality, my tastes, my hobbies and stuff like that. And so now being the age that my mom was when I was 12, it kind of hurts to realize that I did not have more support. It also obviously hurts to realize that she herself did not have more support throughout her life and 32 was so young and I remember I think I made a card for my mom when I was I guess 10 and I wrote 30 you know on the card because she was turning 30 and I remember she accepted it and she was happy about it but she was like oh you didn't have to put like the age on the card like in a funny way and it stuck in my memories because here I am at 32 in no way I'm thinking I'm old I'm actually so happy I made it to 32 a lot of people don't make it to that age I am so so proud of myself to be alive and still going forward and working on myself and realizing who I am as a person and that things that society and my environment told me I have to want and willing to achieve I actually don't want those things I want completely something else for myself and I think I will die knowing that I was honest with myself and I think with that I will have less regrets because by my 30s I had a bunch of regrets and I, I lived my life for everybody else I had this voice of everybody else especially my mom judging me giving me opinions asking me why are you doing this you know in my head and it was really hanging over me again like a heavy cloud at this age yes it's still happening but I'm fighting it I know how to deal with that and this is what I'm striving for just to be me and get rid of those conditions I don't want it anymore and just so realizing how different me and my parents were at the same age is kind of insane and I'm just so happy for myself that I keep going and again just being here and being alive I'm proud of myself maybe I did not achieve a lot in the society eyes maybe I do not have a long extensive career I don't own millions I'm not a business owner I don't have a giant house I don't travel every damn week you know I don't have three kids a car and a dog but you know what I do have a husband that I love who loves me we have two beautiful sons two little cats who I hope they love us but we definitely love them they are joy over our lives and yeah I'm working on myself I love myself that's the most important thing I feel like and I think everything else will be fine I really have a positive feeling that eventually I'll be okay life is not good only it's good bad and everything that is in between neutrals as well and I want to take it as it is I want to accept the life as it is I want to be I don't want to show up as a fake one in russian we say to be and not to say and this is what i want to be i want to be i don't want to say you know what i mean so yes that was it let me know what was your progress in april if you worked on anything in terms of personal development and self-growth so thank you for watching and i see you in the next video i hope you are strong inspired motivated to keep going don't give up you are needed on this planet live your life as you wish you deserve that